Crush Welcome it. to Unsung, oh, Pittsburgh's premier nonprofit news magazine show. I'm your host, Anthony Walker. It's summertime in Pittsburgh, so we're out enjoying nature in beautiful Frick Park. Speaking of, it's time for Unsung to go to camp again. This year's camp episode comes from West Penn's Burn Camp, and the Andy Warhol Museum gives us special access to the 2013 Youth Invasion. But first, as always, let's take a look at what is happening with our area nonprofits. Dating is hard, especially when you're looking for the perfect organization for which to volunteer. Haven't found your match? Here's your chance. Join Pump and Pittsburgh Cares for volunteer speed dating on Monday, August 5th, and fall in love with your nonprofit match. Enjoy a happy hour of unique drink specials, light refreshments, and great conversations all at Wiggle Whiskey in Pittsburgh Strip District. Doors open at 5.30. Coming Out of the Dark is an original multimedia musical with a Rock of Ages feel. Author Mina Donata has created a heart-touching, frightening, truthful picture of domestic violence and generational impact. This piece crosses racial lines, featuring Caucasian, African American, biracial, and other ethnic groups. Through the use of multimedia, Coming Out of the Dark highlights staggering statistics and sheds light on the emotional torment of domestic violence victims, as well as providing resources for aid. The trailer will be used to support development for the stage musical, as well as an independent film project. The project is being sponsored by the Uniontown Arts Fellowship and the Phoenix Arts Center. You can find out more at thephoenixartscenter.org. Greg Straub makes the trek up north to Camp Conaqui to find out what it's like to go to burn camp. The camp started in 1986. The doctors that were running the burn unit at the time, Dr. Harvey Slater and Bill Goldfarb, um, recognized that among the patients that were admitted to the burn unit, 30% of them were pediatric injuries, and some of them were having a hard time reinserting themselves to society just because of their psychological problems related to the trauma and the injury, and also the um, physical problems that sometimes came with uh, burn surgery, skin grafting, scarring. Uh, in 1987, we we're seeing that a lot of the children that we saw in the clinic were not uh, uh, wearing their pressure garments and not uh, doing exercising like they were supposed to be doing. They weren't playing outside, not going to the local swimming pools, and not doing normal kid things. And we felt that we could maybe help them along in doing that. So they tried to identify an environment that while addressed these specific issues, the psychological issues and the physical issues, at the same time will provide a place for them to meet other children that went through the same injuries. I fell in love with actually seeing the kids be kids. We, they weren't sick anymore, we, we didn't have to force them to do exercises. On one side you have the psychological problems that come from a traumatic experience. Some of them not only lose um, their homes, they lose family members. Through the process of recovery, they have to go through pain, they have to go through addressing changes, a number of changes that can be very difficult to deal with. And at the same time, there is the, the physical aspect of this uh, in regards to uh, skin grafting, in regards to scarring, in regards to sometimes loss of function. So these are struggles that are difficult for anybody in particular for a, a young child. Uh, the purpose of this is to address those issues and at the same time um, for them to see that there are other people that go through the same problems or similar problems and they can go back to their normal activities. Coming back every year after year we can see them grow into adulthood and they come back as counselors now. And... No, they're attracting me to the campus. I like to uh give back to what they gave me. They gave me a, a nice, comfortable, warm spot when I was younger, and I'd like to give it all back to them. If I would have to describe it in a couple sentences, it's, it's, it's always exciting, and we're always family here, so it's 
just like being at a typical house for anyone really. Now, a lot of these patients sometimes have to face uh, bullying, uh, have to face the interaction with um, other children that have not gone through this and perhaps not completely understand the problem. So we try to help them uh, both with ideas like this, like camp, and also through programs like uh, return to or back to school programs where we um, go and talk to the class and the other children and that we think makes the process much easier for them. And they don't have to be stared at. No one here will just keep staring at you and wondering what that thing is on your arm. With my burns, they're not as scarful. The, the tissue is not pretty bad. So I do see some of the students that have um, scars that are more visible. And knowing that I'm a burn victim and they're a burn victim, I know what it looks like, but other kids and adults don't know what it's like. So when they're here, I like to know that, let them know that they're the same as everyone else. And being able to leave and know that they're accepted throughout the world without anyone staring at them twice or anything like that is very promising. Here, if someone wants to know, how did you get that on your arm, they'll just say, how did you get your burn? And we feel comfortable in saying, oh, I burnt myself from a grease fire or whatever it might have been. And no one's going to make fun of you here. Please uh, reaching out through our uh, website, westbendburncenter.com. Uh, there you will have, find specific information on who to contact if you are willing and you can uh, um, give some time and participate particularly in the camp. If that's not possible, you can all, we always accept uh, charitable donations that help to offset the cost of putting this together. Uh, we have a wonderful team that works all year long in putting this together. Uh, we're always willing to get new help from the community. The youth have taken over and you will love how they blended social media with art and performance, all with the way cool background of the Andy Warhol Museum. Tonight we have Youth Invasion. It's an annual event where teens literally invade the entirety of the museum. So we take over the entire space. And it's our annual teen party. Students are running all the different activities. They learn all about the museum in about two months. I and mean, they learn how to curate, they learn how to fundraise, they learn how to do social media integrated with the museum. And then they come together and create this event for teens all over Pittsburgh. And every year Youth Invasion has a different theme. And this year we're a status update. So the teens are investigating how do we curate our own identities through social media? How does technology affect the way we communicate with one another? Um, and they want to do it with a little bit of sass and a little bit of sarcasm, so we have a lot of different things happening. So we are at the Warhol and silk screening is our thing. The fashion show. For the last two months, a group of 20 teenagers have been meeting in our basement one day a week for two to three hours, putting together their own designs. Most of these students, half of these students, have never sewed in their lives before. They're working with three artists from the Art Institute, two artist educators at the Warhol, and going from pattern to development to fabric choices to making their own clothes and then modeling them on the runway. The catch of the day. Fresh daily, fresh cats daily, cat fishing. Grumpy cat fishing um, is just what it sounds like. It is a bunch of grumpy cats and you go magnet fishing and there's also a lot of other internet cats and if you win the grumpy cat, you get to take it home. So in October, I started my own clothing brand and um, this is the first time that I'm actually selling my shirts. And they're all Made in America t-shirts and tank tops. 
of designs that I made myself. And this one right here I think is perfect for the Warhol because it is a, um, it's like it pays homage to pop art. start trusting that there's a date and there's parking and there's people coming uh, and then the teens figure out the rest uh, and that's exactly what's happened tonight. They've come up with some incredible ideas. We've been kind of riffing on social media since the get-go, thinking about all these things that connect them and disconnect them and make them communicate, not communicate, etc. Um, and all of a sudden it's coming to life in one night in this museum. And they've done a fantastic job. Artist Image Resource is an artist-run print and imaging laboratory that integrates the production of fine art print work with innovative educational programs that explore the creative process. AIR offers public access opportunity through their studio hours on Tuesdays and Thursdays, along with private tutorials and studio rentals. Open access information is available at artistimageresource.wordpress.com slash access. AIR is located on Pittsburgh's north side at 518 Forland Street, one block north of East Ohio Street between Middle and James Street. Celebrating women having a global impact will be held on Saturday, November 16th at the August Wilson Center. Mark your calendars for this much anticipated event. You can read more about the nominees, view the trailer for the film premiere, and purchase tickets online now at the address on your screen. August 3rd is the 11th annual Kickball for Hope, a charity kickball tournament. Each year, 600 young and young thinking folks gather for a day of kickball and picnicking in Mellon Park. Games and music will be going on all day. Food and drink will be provided. Kickball for Hope is an annual adult co-ed kickball tournament that raises money for Girls Hope and Pump. Teams play in round robin lightning games in the morning slash early afternoon. Winners of each division advance to a single elimination tournament later in the day. In 2012, they had 32 teams play. For more information and to sign up, please visit the address on your screen. You might have recognized story tags and Twitter handles after our stories. We invite you to continue the conversation by tagging the nonprofit or using the story tag on Twitter. As always, you can get in touch with us on Twitter at PGH on video or hashtag UnsungPGH. Once again, thank you for watching Unsung. Be sure to share it with your friends. You can check out our previous episodes and our Unsung Uncut series on PittsburghOnVideo.org. And as a reminder, we've been on iTunes, YouTube, and Blip TV for a while. Got a nonprofit you think is cool? Let us know why, and you might just find yourself here on Unsung. You can email Christopher at whitlatchc at pghfdn.org. As always, I've been your host, Anthony Walker, reminding you to keep it awesome, Pittsburgh. We'll see you next time. I'm going to go take a dip in this babbling brook. So I said I'm going to crush it. Call me the golden boy because it shine whenever I touch it. Don't rush it. The flow comes naturally. Actually, the whole hood after me. Masterpiece, I out in a pace car. Any